so hello friends today we are going to learn about the third chapter of biology that's human reproduction it is a most vital chapter and even it's the most important chapter questions come a lot from this chapter so you need to get clear about this chapter so the first thing for the there are total seven units in this chapter seven units the first one is the male reproductive system then it is the female reproductive system then it has gametogenesis menstrual cycle fertilization and implantation pregnancy and embryonic development parturition and lactation so today we'll start with our male reproductive system this unit so let's start the first thing the first thing we need to learn about it is the reproductive events in humans the first thing we want to know about it is the reproductive parts in the human and the events occurring there so reproductive events in humans let's start with it first thing is this video is fully based on ncert i will say you at last the extra things about neat and all after completing the whole chapter don't worry then reproductive events in humans it is a formation of gametes is known as gametogenesis the term is derived from the word gamete and the formation of gametes is known as gametogenesis then what are the reproductive events main events are two there are two main events the first event is the insemination this is the first event and the second event is the fertilization this is the second event so insemination has two parts it has male sperm and ovum in females these are the two things that it needs male sperm and ovum in females these two these two are the constituents of insemination but what is the process insemination it is transfer of sperm to female genital tract it is the transfer of sperms to female genital tract male sperms gets transferred into female ovum and this is known as insemination then what is fertilization fusion of male and female gametes which leads to form zygote fertilization is the second event of reproduct second reproductive event and fusion of male and female gamete to form zygote is the process of fertilization this is fusion formation is gametogenesis how it is allowed it is followed by formation and development of blastocyst blastocyst and its attachment with uterine wall is implantation okay remember this attachment blastocyst and its attachment to uterine wall is implantation its attachment to embryonic development is gestation and its attachment to delivery of baby is parturition three steps implantation gestation and parturition delivery of baby is parturition embryonic development attachment with blastocyst is gestation and with uterine wall it is implantation then the fact remember it that sperm formation continues in old men also but ovum stops in women around 50 years of age now by hearing this you must be wondering then how a 80 year old lady how a 70 year old lady is being able to give birth to a baby it is only because in it's some exception cases some way you know menstrual cycle stops in uh, 35 to 40 years and in some cases the menstrual cycle continues till 60 years so it varies but the general fact is ovum stops in women around 50 years of age and sperm formation continues in old men also then male reproductive system the main part it is located in the pelvis region this is important it is located in the pelvis region includes pair of testes along with accessory duct glands and external genitalia it includes pair of testes along with accessory ducts glands and external genitalia testes are situated outside the abdominal cavity within a pouch called scrotum and this scrotum it helps in maintaining the low temperature of testis to 2.5 degrees celsius less than normal temperature okay so male reproductive system it includes a pair of testis along with other dogs this gone 
what is scrotum and what it is function it helps in the process of spermatogenesis how spermatogenesis occurs only when uh, in the testes 2 to 2.5 degree less than the normal temperature is the condition necessary for spermatogenesis and this is done only by scrotum testes are situated outside the abdominal cavity within a pouch called scrotum means scrotum covers the testes like a sac low temperature of testes 2 to 2.5 degree celsius less than normal temperature it is necessary for spermat it is a condition that spermatogenesis occurs then in adults testes are oval in shape okay in adults testes are oval in shape and its length is 4 to 5 cm width is 2 to 3 cm and covered by dense covering length is 4 to 5 width is 2 to 3 cm remember it and it has 250 compartments called testicular lobules it has 2 to 250 compartments it has 250 compartments called testicular lobules like it many compartments and uh, like this 250 are there and these all single compartment is known as a testicular lobule so now let's see the next part these are my notes and by this only i hope you will be getting understand because it's i have written in more simpler language than even ncert same word same terms but a bit simplified then each lobule of those one 250 lobule each lobule contains one to three highly coiled seminiferous tubule those highly coiled are known as seminiferous tubule and this tubules helps in the production of sperms then each seminiferous tubule is lined on its inside by two types of cells one is male germ cell cells and the other one is sertoli cells male germ cells spermatogonia and sertoli cells so remember from out of 250 compartments each lobule contains one to three highly coiled tubules and those tubules are seminiferous tubule production of sperms occurs there and each seminiferous tubule is lined on its inside inside internally by male germ cells and sertoli cells then male germ cells undergoes meiotic division leading to sperm formation it undergoes meiotic division remember this meiotic division and sertoli cells provides nutrition to germ cells this is interlinked with this how it provides nutrition to this and this undergoes meiotic division to form leading to sperm formation then region outside the seminiferous tubule called interstitial or leydig cells region inside the seminiferous tubule male germ cells and sertoli cells and the region outside the seminiferous tubule is interstitial or leydig cells synthesis and secretes testicular hormones called androgens another immunologically competent cells are also present then male accessory sex accessory duct includes four organs reed testis vas afferens epididymis vas deferens then seminiferous tubule of testis opens into vas afferens through reed testis this is a paragraph in ncert seminiferous tubule of testis open into vas afferens through reed testis then the next statement is vas afferens leaves the testis and opens into epididymis located along posterior surface of each testis then epididymis so this is a whole paragraph but how can you remember it in a well way so i have done a normal specific it's not the real diagrams these are not the real diagrams but i have done so that it will be printed in your mind and you can write it in your own language see see like just to understand seminif let this be the seminiferous tubule if this is our seminiferous tubule this is its opening here suppose the seminiferous tubule and here it is uh, the opening of seminiferous tubule is here like the bottle cap the bottle is like this and the bottle's opening is the cap here you would drink the water so in this way this is opening in the same way suppose let this be the seminiferous tubule of testis and this is its opening and this is a suppose this is a pipe and this pipe is the reed testis and reed testis is connected with the vas afferens so what is it seminiferous tubule of testis opens this opens into to directly to vas afferens but through reed testis by this structure it is opening so remember this one seminiferous tubule of testis opens into vas afferens through reed testis then the next step here see the statement explains that the vas afferens leaves the testis 
vasa afferentia leaves the testis so see here this is the vasa afferentia okay this is the vasa afferentia it leaves the testis this is the testis suppose this is the testis and vasa afferentia is this one this is the testis this is the vasa afferentia this is the leaving point of testis suppose this is the end point of the testis and by this end point this is the leaving point and testis is left here vasa afferentia left testis in this point and this opens into epididymis located along posterior surface of each testis and this vasa afferentia opens into epididymis so remember vasa afferentia left testis and opens into epididymis then epididymis leads to vas deferens that ascends to abdomen and loops over urinary bladder see epididymis leads to vas deferens suppose this is epididymis this structure and this structure leads to this structure this is suppose this is vas deferens and this vas deferens loops over the urine suppose this is urinary bladder and this is the loop this is the loop it is surrounded by the loop of urinary bladder epididymis leads to vas deferens and this loops over the urinary bladder epididymis receives a duct from seminal vesicles and opens into urethra as ejaculatory duct and this ejaculatory duct stores and transports the sperms from testis to outside the urethra to outside through urethra stores and transport the sperms from testis to outside through urethra and originates from urinary bladder and extends to through penis to its extra and that is known as urethral meatus okay so that's known as urethral meatus so it was all about if you want to see the sartori cells diagram then on the page number 44 you have see the sartori cells here on your ncert book this is the sartori cells the diagram is well mentioned here this is the interstitial cells spermatogony and all those and now the next statements the penis is the male external genitalia it is made up of special tissue which helps in erection of penis to facilitate insemination so remember the main thing male accessory glands these are seminal vesicle prostrate gland and bulbo urethra so these are the three gland this seminal vesicle consist of seminal plasma and that seminal plasma is rich in fructose calcium and certain enzymes calcium fructose and certain exam that seminal plasma it consists of seminal plasma that is rich in these things bulbo urethral gland helps in lubrication of penis it is also known as cowper's gland sometimes okay so these were the things of male reproductive system thank you everyone in the next video we will study about female reproductive system in the next video we will read about that till then i these are my notes personal notes i shared with you so that it may help you and if you get any doubt out of these words or sentences then please do write in the comment